Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I would like to begin by thanking our colleague, uh, Chairman Leahy, for his leadership in this uh, area. He has been a model of uh, decorum and patience, and I am personally grateful for his leadership. Uh, my father, as you may recall, served for 18 years on the Judiciary Committee. I lack his patience and therefore never have, but I, am, uh, very, I admire very much Senator Leahy and those who helped to shepherd to these judicial nominations, which unfortunately are all too frequently uh, unnecessarily contentious. Secondly, uh, I noted the presence, I'm sure he will be back shortly, of our colleague Senator Sessions. Although Senator Sessions and I have a disagreement over this nomination, we have worked well in many areas and I look forward to collaborating with him in the future in uh, those many areas where we do find ourselves in agreement. Today, Mr. President, I find myself in agreement with my friend and colleague from my home state of Indiana, Senator Luger, who yesterday on this floor issued a compelling statement in support of the nomination of David Hamilton for the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. For all those members of this body or those uh, viewing us from afar who have questions about Judge Hamilton, I strongly recommend that they read Senator Luger's uh, very eloquent uh, statement in his behalf. He went through every suggested controversy, point by point, uh, debunking those who've raised cons uh, concerns about Judge Hamilton, and ends up by noting his 40 years of acquaintance with both this nominee and his family, and his strong support for Judge Hamilton's uh, nomination. Mr. President, I rise today to speak in favor of the nomination of Judge David Hamilton. I join together with Senator Luger to recommend Judge Hamilton because I know firsthand that he is a highly capable lawyer who understands the limited role of the federal judiciary. In recent days, some of Judge Hamilton's critics have unfairly characterized his record and even suggested that his nomination should be filibustered. I rise today to set the record straight and hope that my colleagues will join Senator Luger and me in supporting the superbly qualified nominee. Before I speak to Judge Hamilton's qualifications, I would like to briefly comment on the state of the judicial confirmation process generally. In my view, this process has too often become consumed by ideological conflict and partisan acrimony. This is not, I believe, how the framers intended us to exercise our responsibility to advise and consent. During the last Congress, I was proud to work with Senator Luger to recommend Judge John Tinder as a bipartisan consensus nominee for the Seventh Circuit. Judge Tinder was nominated by President Bush and unanimously confirmed by the Senate by a vote of 93 to 0. It was my fervent hope that Judge Tinder's confirmation would serve as an example of what could happen when two senators from different parties work together to recommend a qualified, non-ideological jurist to the federal bench. I know President Obama agrees with this approach. His decision to make Judge Hamilton his first judicial nominee was proof that he wanted to change the tone and follow the Hoosier approach of working across party lines to, collect, to uh, select consensus nominees. On the merits, Judge Hamilton is an accomplished jurist who is well qualified to be elevated to the appellate bench. He has served with distinction as the United States District Judge for over 15 years, presiding over approximately 8,000 cases. He is now the Chief Judge of the Southern District of Indiana, where he has been widely praised for his effective leadership. Throughout his career, Judge Hamilton has demonstrated the highest ethical standards and a firm commitment to applying our country's laws fairly and faithfully. In recommending Judge Hamilton, I have the benefit of being able to speak from personal experience because he was my legal counsel when I had the privilege of serving as Indiana's governor. If you ask Hoosiers about my eight years as governor, you will find widespread agreement that we try to chart a moderate, practical, and bipartisan course. As my counsel, David Hamilton helped me to craft bipartisan solutions to some of the most pressing problems facing our state. He helped resolve several major lawsuits that threaten our state's financial condition. He wrote a tough new ethics policy to ensure that our state government was op uh, operating openly and honestly. In addition to his insightful legal analysis, I could always count on David Hamilton for his sound judgment and the common sense Hoosier values he learned growing up in southern Indiana. Like most Hoosiers, David Hamilton is not an ideologue. During his service in state government, Judge Hamilton also developed a deep appreciation for the separation of powers and the appropriate role of the different branches of government. If confirmed, he will bring to the Seventh Circuit a unique understanding of the important role of the states in our federal system and will be ever mindful of the appropriate role of the federal judiciary. He understands the appropriate role for a judge is to interpret our laws, not to write them. Despite Judge Hamilton's long record as a thoughtful, non-ideological jurist, 
His critics have sought to portray him as a, quote, activist judge, close quote, hostile to religion. I have no doubt that the, uh, such attacks come as a surprise to his father, the Reverend Richard Hamilton, who is the former pastor of St. Luke's Methodist Church in Indianapolis. It's only in the upside-down, hyper-partisan world of Washington, D.C., that the humble son of an Indiana pastor can be turned into a partisan zealot hostile to religion. David Hamilton is not. To my mind, such attacks say more about the sad status of our judicial confirmation process than they do about Judge Hamilton. Some of Judge Hamilton's critics have even suggested that his nomination reaches the level of, quote, quote, extraordinary circumstances justifying a filibuster. This is a nominee jointly recommended by the president to the president by a moderate Democrat and the Senate's senior Republican. If this nomination constitutes extraordinary circumstances, then that phrase has ceased to have any meaning whatsoever. I sincerely hope that all involved will agree to give Judge Hamilton an up or down vote that he so clearly deserves. If not, I fear that filibusters will become routine with regard to judicial nominees. That is not the way our, intent, our framers intended us to operate, nor one that we should. On a personal note, I have known uh, Judge David Hamilton for over 20 years. I know him to be a devoted father, uh, a devoted husband to his wife, Ina, and a loving father to his two daughters, Janet and Devney. He is the nephew of former Congressman Lee Hamilton, a man whose integrity is beyond reproach. As someone who personally knows and trusts Judge Hamilton, I say to my colleagues that he is the embodiment of good judicial temperament, intellect, and even-handedness. If confirmed, he will be a superb addition to the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. I urge my colleagues to join me and Senator Luger in supporting this extremely well-qualified and deserving nominee. Before I end, uh, Mr. President, let me just say a couple of additional things. Uh, David Hamilton has been uh, subjected to a number of uh, unfounded attacks, probably the most ludicrous of which is that he is anti-religion in general and hostile to Jesus Christ in particular. As I mentioned, his father was a 40-year Methodist pastor. David Hamilton was baptized, was married by his father in a religious Christian ceremony, and when he took the oath of office to serve as a federal district court judge, he placed his hand upon the Bible, Old and New Testament alike, swearing fealty to our nation and his devotion to our laws. He is not hostile to religion. He is not hostile to Jesus Christ. That charge is unfounded. Likewise, it has been suggested that Judge Hamilton is in some way uh, soft on crime. He has had uh, the responsibility of handing down 700 criminal sentences in his time on the bench. 700. The Justice Department has appealed two, a mere fraction of one percent. Judge Hamilton is not soft on crime. Finally, it's been suggested that Judge Hamilton is a judicial activist. A case in our state involving uh, abortion rights has been cited in that regard. I find that to be ironic as well, uh, Mr. President, because the president of the Indiana Federalist Society, an organization not known for embracing activist judges, has strongly endorsed Judge Hamilton's nomination, saying, and I quote, I regard Judge Hamilton as an excellent jurist with a first-rate intellect. He is unfailingly polite to lawyers. He asks tough questions to both sides, and he is very smart. His judicial philosophy is to the left of center, but well within the mainstream, close quote. That is the position of Jeffrey Slaughter, the president of Indiana's Federalist Society. So um, I find this set of circumstances to be most um, Unfortunate. David Hamilton is superbly qualified, and I think that this is more than anything else a comment on the sad state of our judicial nominating process, where this individual has been caricatured, all uh, out of sorts with reality. And if extraordinary circumstances are found with regard to David Hamilton, Mr. President, I am afraid that uh, filibusters of judicial nominations will become routine on the floor of the United States Senate. That would not be good for this body or good for our country. I hope we do not go there today. And again, I urge my colleagues to uh, join with me and Senator Luger in strongly invoking cloture on this nomination and voting to confirm him to the Court of Appeals. And in conclusion, let me say I'm glad to see Senator Sessions once again. Senator, I noted our many areas of agreement. My pleasure in working with you on many occasions in the past, and I'm confident in the future, even as we have a difference of opinion about this nomination today.